Kevin O'Sullivan's going to be filling in for me next week as I sashay my way around the continent of Europe. Well, possibly. Um, if, indeed, I could follow in the footsteps of Simon Calder, I would be a very lucky man. Uh, he's taking a bus to Brussels. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? That's what he's saying. Um, let me read you this, because there's nothing better than the travails and the travels of Mr Simon Calder, who's today going to be operating as our Brexit correspondent uh, down at the port of Dover. The mood on board has darkened since crossing the River Medway, he says, which coincided with somebody opening an overpoweringly pungent snack which seems to be infused with weapons-grade garlic. These are the troubles of, of travelling uh, on public transport, which I very rarely do. Uh, but let's find out now from Simon Calder, who I think is currently on a coach at Dover going through the immigration process, or the emigration process, you might say. Simon, a very good uh, afternoon to you. Welcome. Mike, what an absolute pleasure to talk <laughs> to you, not least because I am... Let me just um, open that for your uh, lovely viewers. I am now in the port of Dover. We are actually, we got through passport control for France in eight minutes Brilliant. flat. I had a stopwatch on it. And I'll tell you how we did it. The French have sent over extra people to help. They had uh, an officer, as soon as he went in, um, just saying, OK, go over there, go over there. Obviously, the um, uh, EU queue was moving much quicker, but they actually called me out and said, um, come over here. Um, really quick... Well, surely process. you should, as a, as a Ramona, you should go through the EU queue, shouldn't you? You should get special uh, dispensation for you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it is quite extraordinary. We're now going to check in, and um, apparently we've got to have all our passports checked again, um, but uh, that, that's actually due to be leaving the UK. But frankly, I am amazed. I've been going for three hours now from London. Yeah. I'd... Um, followed all the advice um we're now going backwards which is always worrying my mind on the journey um but i followed all the advice to um uh, make sure that um the uh that i had supplies entertainment obviously your show is um uh, quite sufficient for that thank you um and um to be ex wait, expect a three-hour wait well it hasn't happened like that at all right. so i'm now on the um on the bus i paid 60 quid for it my That's ticket a lot, isn't says it for i'm a going bus? to well, yeah, but um, you try getting a flight. Um, Eurostar to Brussels is wanting at least twice as much as that, mm. maybe three times as much. And lots of very happy people on my um, my bus with me, um, apart from the... And I haven't identified him or her yet, right. yet the uh, garlic-eating person. Yes. Um, well, what do you suspect the uh, noxious substance actually was? Well, I assume it was last night's Chicken Kiev, but who ah, knows, frankly, right. we, we, you can't tell. See, um, people however, see, I would say one of the rules on a bus is that you shouldn't be allowed to eat. Oh, yeah. Hey? I, I couldn't agree more, yeah. Um, you know, drinking you water what, is fine, but no eating. Yeah, but I tell you what, they are giving out snacks. They're mm. used to this, so they've given us all a bottle of water, um, a Kit Kat, uh, some odd... Um, Belgian uh, confectionery, but oh, yeah. I mean they're very, very much looking after it. Uh, Hussein is our excellent driver. He keeps making announcements in French, which is distressing. Yeah. He said something about grève in Calais. Oh, yeah. uh, grève, of course, being I know enough French to know that that's a strike. Um, but uh, <laughs> well, honestly, I mean, it's not going too badly at all. Yeah, well, I noticed that last night um, they set fire to Emmanuel Macron's favourite restaurant, La Rotonde. Uh, in Paris, yes. and they ta they targeted it because that's where he had his celebration party last time he won an election. So, I mean, yeah. uh, you're a very brave man going anywhere near that part of the world, but I'm joining you, I'll be uh, sorry to tell you, uh, tomorrow I'll be travelling across uh, to France, but I'm going on the old shuttle, uh, which I'm told yes. is uh, is not hopefully as badly backed up as Dover. Although, from what you're saying today, yeah. they seem to have fixed the Brexit-related problems from last weekend. Uh, well, they, they are absolutely doing all they can to get people through which is terrific um yeah i we, we came past the uh, euro tunnel they were actually putting out the bunting i managed to grab a word and they said yeah mike graham is coming down tomorrow <laughs> so we're uh, clearing things up but uh, no um i mean com compared with the misery last week when of course you know anybody would have accepted a, 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 you know, a wait of two or three hours people were waiting 12 16 maybe 24 hours um stuck in, in oh, it must queues. have been awful and, i can't uh, imagine how dreadful yeah. that would have been yeah, now, I mean, I think things possibly will hot up because obviously, you know, if, if, if there's people leaving the Midlands or the West of England or right. Northwest or Wales or whatever, then they are probably not going to be here yet. And so things could get busy this afternoon. Yes. Um, but uh, in terms of what I've been expecting, it's, uh, it's going pretty well. 
and um, actually the rest of the bank holiday travel seems, from what I've been able to catch up on, um, is uh, also proceeding. Yes. Um, well, I can well tell you from just from my from my own localised London centric view, it was, the traffic yesterday afternoon was absolutely horrendous. Um, and this morning, London is literally like a ghost town. So everybody, I think, who was leaving has gone and went yesterday. Oh, well, that, that is encouraging. Um, middle of the day, so from about now onwards till four o'clock is when they're expecting the uh, really serious uh, delays on the western half, the um, semicircle of the uh, M25 uh, around London, yes. uh, on the M5 southbound from uh, Bristol towards Devon, and, of course, uh, going north on the M6 from roughly the... Uh, uh, the, the Liverpool Manchester area. Oh, hang on, we've got an announcement coming in. I oh, think. go on. Um, uh, well, we yeah. Are you under the flu? <laughs> okay, I, I, right. No, no I, I, more bets. It, it's a Belgian bus, so their, their, their bus, their rules. Um, so uh, you can't expect anything in English. Um, but I, I think passport. So I think either either we have to um, uh, get off the bus and hand in our passports again, or Monsieur, he uh, looks as though yeah, Hussein, the driver, very good man, is coming around and picking yes. up passports. Well, I was told, um, uh, we had a coach driver uh, who called us up the other day, and he said that there's a two-stage process, that, uh, that the G4S will take your passports while you're still in the sort of cruising area of, of the British side, and then you go into the shed, as he recall, as he called it, where the French will wait for you, where they will then look at them, and that supposedly only takes about five minutes, he said. But then the problem is that apparently they're very keen after that to have a rest, the French, because, uh, you know, obviously it's very tiring. So they take a sort of a break every between every coach that they see, which is partly why things take such a long time. Uh, absolutely not the case. I was the last one, obviously, going through. Oh, here we are, Hussein, collecting passports. I'm going to have to um, uh, give papers. you mine. Papers. Give us your papers. Yeah, hang on, hang on. What have I done with it? This is the EU oh, super yeah. state you're dealing with now. You know. <laughs> If it wasn't for the fact oh, that they're so administratively, um, you know, tr challenged, ah. you'd be all right. Oh, there we are. Yeah, that's well, it. No, yeah. Um, no, I'm sorry, we can't let you Kit in. Bo Kit Kat bobs, they are. <laughs> Here we are. No, I just need to get a picture of you with your excellent... Yeah, no, as we travel with the PNO, PNO is can't deserve. As we travel with the DFDS, you have the... Oh, that's very good. Yes, yes. So, DFDS, very this good. Is super. So, um, here we are. Oh, no. This, is like, a, this is like a, well, it's like we're in our own reality show, Simon. It's brilliant. <laughs> you know, travels with Simon Cole. I must say, um, it's very generous of you to take, to give up your Easter weekend for your viewers and listeners and readers. That you're, because you're actually going on a journey where people can follow you all the way to Brussels, right? Uh, well, that, that, who knows if I'm going to Brussels? Um, Mike, I've got exactly no idea how I'm going to get back. Given all the chaos last weekend, I am not going to book a train back from Lille right. or from Brussels or a flight or anything else. And I may jump ship at Calais if I, if, I, if I get come out straight of the back. bus and then come back. Now, uh, of course, people are going to say, hang on, matey, you haven't got a car. And they don't take foot passengers um, on Friday afternoons, Why which not? is all true, because um, uh, there's no money in foot passengers. That's they just ridiculous. get in the way, basically. That's bonkers, but isn't it? I do have a secret weapon in the shape of a folding bicycle. Ah. So I can, if I extract from Hussein my folding bike, right. I will then become a, a, a cycling passenger, and I can come back on a ferry. Right. Or you could always but, try. But, you could always try stowing away in a lorry, because nobody does that anymore. They wouldn't expect it. <laughs> Michael, that is really uncalled for. What do you mean? Um, okay. Um, um, <laughs> look, the, the other thing is that I've just been told by DFDS um, that the, um, uh, the, 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 the there is a queue of sixty to ninety minutes coming back oh, really? um, through Calais. Yeah, um, okay. which uh, which is interesting. Um, I presume those are the people who went over last week, and they're all now coming back. So I will try and find out about that. Yes. But meanwhile, it's a happy bus, as you can tell. They're saying the driver is very popular amongst his um, excellent passengers. He's re recruited a young lad to hand out more chocolate and more water. I mean, frankly, if you know, it's difficult to define living the dream. Yes. But I think you'd be um, hard pressed to, to look much further than this. Yes. Well, if you de if you get terribly badly stuck, you know, I might be able to find some room at my rented gaff for you. 
um, not a million miles oh, away lovely. from the uh, uh, from the D-Day beaches. Well, um, uh, you you are a connoisseur of uh, northern France, which um, absolutely so many people overlook. A gorgeous, gorgeous part. It is a lovely part. Although of the world. I, have, I have noticed they do speak French. Yes, and well, well, luckily I speak a bit of French. It, it always improves yeah. with, with every day that I'm there. I, I remember new words that just come out of my mouth that I learned when I was in second form, and I don't know why I even know them. But you know, there we are. But listen, great to see you. Um, enjoy the uh, the journey, however it ends up, and uh, we'll see you soon on your return. Uh, Simon Calder there on his journey across the Channel. Uh, he says he might not be able to get back. Why wouldn't they take foot passengers? What's wrong with them? That's ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, take up no space whatsoever. Just walk on. But, of course, we all know there is the most efficient way of getting here. Uh, he's not on a ferry uh, or a train or even a plane. You know what I mean.